gentlemen, can Air Services Australia supply the committee with all sod props data, including both daytime and nighttime operations? Um, Senator Jason Hartford, Chief Executive Officer, yes. For Brisbane Airport? Yes. Um, since the opening of the new runway in 12th of July 2020, and the data should include dates, the number of sod props, flights and hours of operation. Yep? Yes. In a timely fashion. That would be fantastic. Members of the Brisbane community have raised queries regarding use of the full-length takeoff for non-jet air traffic departing to the south. Does full-length takeoff enable earlier manoeuvrability for turboprop aircraft to avoid build-up areas? Uh, Senator, without um, having, I'll call the instrument departure plate in front of it, um, using the full length, that they'll gain height quicker. And depending on where the turning point is, if it's based around at a being at a particular height, the answer would be yes. Sorry. The answer would be yes yep. if it's based around a turning point at a, at a certain height. Okay. Thank you. Um, does full-length takeoff enable turboprop aircraft to climb to a safe turning height within the airfield boundaries? Uh, Senator, it would depend on um, where the turn is and what height it would be to whether it would be within the airport boundary. I'm asking if it's in a... Is it possible? Like, of course, it, it relies on all those different metrics and... Um, caveats, but a full length takeoff, are they able to climb to a safe turning height, not any turning height, a safe, what's destined to, you know, determined to be a safe turning height within the airfield um, um, boundaries? Most likely, yes. Okay, thank you. Would use of full length takeoff on runway 19R enable aircraft to fly over fewer suburbs at a low height? You said, uh, I'll ask Mr Curran to answer that question. Senator Peter Curran, Air Services, Australia Chief Customer External Relations Officer. We've been undertaking a trial for the past um, near 18 months um, in Brisbane using the full length um, departure for runway um, 19 right. Um, we've, uh, thank you, 19R, not 19. Um, we've been um, gathering data on the performance um, using our noise monitoring stations located throughout Brisbane. We've been publishing that data on a quarterly basis for the Brisbane community and engaging with the um, AAB, which is the Airport Advisory uh, Board, which was established earlier this year by the government, um, and providing that information. We're um, soon to make a decision as to the continuation of that trial and also another trial for extension of SOD props. That's uh, an acronym for simultaneous opposite direction parallel runway operations. Um, both of those trials have been running um, uh, for approximately 18 months and they were instigated from uh, a former uh, noise um, a body established by the then um, uh, government for, uh, called BAPAF, the Brisbane Airport uh, Advisory Forum. Um, so we've been gathering that data, publishing it, um, and we'll be making a decision as to the ongoing um, so, look, for both of those trials. Mr Curran, we have very limited time today. So if you could, I know it seems quite rude, but if we could just like ask and answer the questions, it would be really, really helpful. Um, so does it allow you to fly over fewer suburbs at a low height, or are you just doing pilots? Um, you don't know yet. Senator, the, is the, the answer you don't know yet? The data we have shows that there is no discernible noise difference over the communities um, that we have noise monitors for. So that the answer, the answer is, the answer is I think the answer is no to your question. It doesn't allow you to fly over fewer suburbs. Um, and the suburbs that you do overfly, there is no discernible difference in noise. So what areas of Brisbane would be less impacted? None. Uh, on the data we have, none. And two, two locations, St Lucia uh, and uh, a nearby suburb, there was a one decibel um, worse outcome for residents there. Has Air Services Australia recommended pilots use the full length of the runway at Brisbane? Senator, that's correct. That is, that is the trial that we have in place for, for runway 19 right. Does the use of the full runway for takeoff impact on the amount of thrust needed to achieve height markers in the flight paths? Uh, Senator, I'd, I'd have to um, provide that answer on notice. There's some okay. quite significant technical complexities with that. And does use of the full runway for takeoff enable pilots to use full thrust to climb higher, quicker, reducing impact of aircraft noise on residents and businesses underneath the flight path? 
Senator, the answer from the data we've gathered over the last of the, of the trial has been no. Has been no. Okay, so I have a range of questions on the Sydney Airport um, that I will have to put on notice, and I look forward to receiving um, your answers. Uh, just sorry, I've got, I've just missed something. Sorry. Yep, I've done a bit on Brisbane. Uh, yep, but now I've just got um, in Quan two six one reports that between June the twenty second and May the twenty three there were thirty one formal complaints of inappropriate behaviour, including bullying and harassment at Air Services Australia. Given the concerns raised at last estimates, what action has Air Services Australia? Um, had to these concerns? Uh, Senator, um, those were sort of formal um, complaints to give you a view up until um, to date. Since that time, there's been another 14 oh, um, complaints. Right. Uh, out of those in total um, of su um, suspected misconduct, including bullying and harassment, uh, five of those were unsubstantiated during their as uh, assessment. Yep. Eleven went to formal investigation. Um, Thirty-three of those were resolved through what we would call non-investigative resolutions, such as mediation or there has been misunderstanding, etc. And five are, stu um, are still being assessed to whether they go to full investigation. Have you completed that review of culture at Air Services Australia? Uh, we previously did that in 2020. We've had a progress review done by Elizabeth Broderick and Co, and that was published on the 28th of September. It is on our website, and our response plan I actually have here, and I'm willing to table. Oh. It, it's also available on our website, but I've got our response Thank plan you, here. Thank you, Harfield. We'll take that. Has Minister King raised any specific concerns with Air Services Australia regarding the number of complaints received? Uh, not specifically, other than uh, ongoing concern which we will report quarterly on our whole culture journey and which includes statistics, etc. accordingly through our normal formal reporting. Senators around this table have been on this committee for a very, very long time and are quite tired of hearing Air Services Australia walk in every single estimate with appalling lists of bullying and harassments. Reviews are announced, reviews are completed, action plans are drafted, and everyone just marches on. What, tell me something is going to be different, Mr Harfield. Senator, um, as you'll see from the progress report, is that some things have changed since the 2020 uh, review conducted by Elizabeth Broderick. There are some areas where um, action has taken, and due to a range of things, there are some areas that have not gone as well as we expected. That's the reason why we actually do progress reviews, to actually ensure are we on track and are we improving. Uh, our response plan, which um, we've tabled, um, has some immediate action on some of the concerns yep. that we've done with our review. All right. and Mr. Harfield, Mr Harfield, I feel like I'm in a I've just got the record on repeat. Has Minister King called you into her office and asked you to explain these appalling bullying and harassment figures? No, she has not. If she did, would you attend? Yes. And explain? Yes. Why this keeps happening? Uh, I will explain the journey we're on and all the actions that we have taken to, to reduce this journey. Question 339 advised 73 claims had been referred to Comcare by Air Services Australia staff in the 22-23 financial year to date. Has the Minister requested advice on the high level of Comcare claims within Air Services Australia? No. What action is being taken to address these high levels of Comcare claims? A range of actions, uh, Senator, depending on uh, what the case is, is that um, as we have a high level of, um, sorry, um, 
uh, some of our uh, activities, such as our aviation rescue and firefighting uh, services and the physical activity associated with them. A lot of our concrete claims are around uh, soft tissue injuries and those type of injuries, and so return to work and work through um, a range. We'll have to give it on notice on all the work that's being done across all those but claims. But the Minister or her office has not reached out to Air Services Australia to ask what is wrong in the state of Denmark? Uh, the Minister has not reached out to have a briefing on the Comcare claims. Can you please provide an update on the Noise Action Plan for Brisbane? Uh, yes, we can. Oh, you want to actually just say sorry? Wow. Mr. Curran? I, I, I thought you were asking for a notice. Sorry. Sorry. I was asking for an update. <laughs> you pardon, I misunderstood. I took that to be on notice. I but... think, Assistant Minister, you've seen it for yourself. Will you undertake to contact Minister King and ask her to have a meeting with these guys? Because you've sat around this table long enough as well that these workers and these unacceptably high bullying and harassment claims and Comcare claims for an organisation this size need to actually be dealt with at a ministerial level. I'm sure uh, Minister King, uh, like we all do, expects the highest standards possible and that these uh, are dealt with appropriately at all times. So you think the Minister's dealt with this appropriately? Um, I think that she expects that the... I know that. I know that. I'm asking what you, having heard the evidence here and not your first rodeo, Will you undertake to let her or her office know that this is something that needs to be dealt with, that she needs to sit these guys down and show them she is serious about this? I'm sure that the minister will take appropriate action. We'll see about that. Um, how many noise complaints have been received in the Brisbane region in the past 12 months? Sorry, just one moment. Brisbane since uh, the start of this uh, calendar year. Um, would that be acceptable? Yeah, sure. Okay, since it's a September year to date, um, we've had um, uh, um, 23,328 uh, contacts or complaints made by 5,159 uh, individual complainants. Oh. Pardon me. What uh, is the trajectory excuse, excuse, of airport excuse noise? Excuse me, Senator, I need to correct the answer that I just gave you. I beg your pardon. I've read the total out since the opening of the Brisbane um, uh, parallel runway. The, 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 the total is, in fact, um, uh, 1,425 complainants, uh, making 8,336 complaints. And that's from January to September? Correct. With the 5,000 being since it opened? Yep, got it. Um, what's the trajectory of airport noise complaints since the opening of the Brisbane Airport Corps parallel runway in July 22? Uh, the number of uh, complainants has uh, been relatively stable since um, uh, 2022 uh, and uh, 2021. However, during the course of this year, we've seen an increase in the number of complaints well, made trying. per complainant. In the interest of time, I have to stop questioning. I hope things change before we see each other again. Done. All right. Thank you.